Final Cut Steph here, back with another Rampant tutorial for Final Cut Pro 10. In this tutorial, we are going to create an eye glow effect using Rampant's Monster Toolkit and TrackX from Cormelt. Check out the links below if you would like to grab a free trial copy of TrackX and some free monster files from Rampant as well. Alright, let's get going on this effect. Now, as you can see, I've already imported my footage, but I don't have any monster textures yet, so let's go ahead and grab some of those. Now, here's our monster toolkit. As you can see, there's everything from cheeks and teeth and mouths and wounds and all kinds of stuff. But we're going to focus on the eyes because we're doing a glowing eye effect. So let's click on the eyes. Again, lots and lots of eyes. But I'm going to go with the cat eye. And I'm actually looking for a red one. So there are two different red ones. That one's okay. But I want a brighter one. I like this one. So let's go with this. Drag that over here into Final Cut. All right, let's add our footage to our timeline to start. And we're going to rewind this. And like I said, we're going to be using uh, CoreMelt's TrackX program. It's really simple to use and really easy to keep all this in Final Cut and not have to leave the editor. So once you install TrackX, you're going to be able to find it in your generators panel over here. So if I click over here, it's going to bring up the TrackX. And you're going to see there's three different ways to track. Now we're going to be focusing on the track layer. But there are, like you can see here, there are three. So take a look at CoreMelt's website. They have tons of tutorials showing how to use each of these trackers, and they're all worth looking at, and they're all really cool. But we're going to work, be working with this one. So let's drag this one on top of our footage. And I'm going to zoom out here just a little bit because I want to cinch this up, make it fit our edit, just like that. That's perfect. Now let's zoom in just a little bit. Now I want to rename this layer first. It's going to help me keep track of everything when we get all these layers in. And we're going to start with the left eye. So I'm going to call this left eye. Perfect. Now, TrackX is really simple to use. It basically breaks it down into three very simple steps for you. So we're going to start with this. And we're going to keep our play hit at head at the beginning. And it says the first step is tracking. Perfect. So let me grab a selection tool. I like the Bezier tool because it allows me to create a better, more naturalistic shape. So I'm going to go ahead and track this out. As you can see here, I'm actually drawing a shape that's bigger than just the eye because I want to give the tracker a little bit more information to track with. So that's what that's why I chose a bigger shape. Now, you can track from anywhere inside of here. You can make your shape wherever you want. I like to start at the beginning because it allows me to track the whole clip, but again, that's my personal preference. So once you have your shape on your face or whatever you're tracking, you're going to click this arrow down here and it's going to track. Let's do that. All right, so the track is done. So let's scoot this back. Now the next step is to put the surface in. And we're using the eye, so I'm going to click surface. I'm going to go back over here to generator. And this is where you're going to enter your image. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on my eye. It's going to pop up. And it's going to say apply clip. So we want to click there. All right, so far so good. Now we have to resize this. It's really easy. They have these little handles. The blue handles are going to resize the um, entire image and then the green handles are going to work on perspective. Let's do the blue first. Let's sh shrink this in and I'm going to zoom in a bit on this clip so we can see her eye a little more. And then let's get this there a little smaller. Now when I'm working with eyes on my actors I like to try to keep the black part of their iris showing. I think it looks more natural and it looks a little better. That's a personal preference of mine. You don't have to do that. That's just for me. But let's see. So here you see the black outline. Now, this eye under here, her real eye, is actually round. This is flat. So we kind of have to fake that with Final Cut. And the way you do that is with this perspective. So if we click on these green brackets, we can sort of pull out that eye. We're going to do this side as well and make it look. We're going to have to bring this down just a little bit. Make it look a little more round. You have to cheat that. So that looks pretty good. Maybe it needs to come down just a little bit. Let's see what we got. All right, that's good. I'm happy with that. So, so far, so good. Now, step number three, we have to do the mask, right? Masking just means you cover up a portion of something. So we're going to be masking out this top part of her eyelid because this has to go underneath her eyelid. So 
I'm going to choose the Bezier selection tool again, and I'm going to make some marks right along her eyelid, just like this. Now, as you can see, that's backwards. So we're going to go over here into our panel and we're going to invert this like that. Okay. And now we need this to look like it's going underneath her eyelid. And the best way for me to do that is to pull these down and have the tools, the mask actually blur the element into her eyes. So that's what I'm doing. There are different ways you can approach this. This is my favorite. I think it looks the most natural, but feel free to experiment with different masks however you feel fit. So I want to actually put another, uh, I'm going to put another marker in here so I can make this a little bit rounder so I can make it look more natural. And I'm trying to get that shadow to appear underneath her eye. That's what I'm going for. So as you can see, it's still sticking up just a little bit. So let's pull that down just a little more. There we go. Pull that down. And I want to go back to the surface because I think her eyes tilted just a little bit. Her face is tilted. So let's go ahead and rotate this just a bit like that. And let's see what we look like. Looks like it's still a little high. Let's see, see how this, the fake iris is sort of cutting in. So let's zoom in and let's bring this down just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and zoom out of that. Hide the mask. Looks like it just needs a little more shadow. So let's zoom in. Click on our mask again. Oops, a little bit here. All right, let's hide that. Let's zoom out. There we go. See that shadow really gives it the illusion that this is hiding underneath her eyelid, which is what we want. That's perfect. Okay. So this looks still kind of strange. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work on the blend mode for this. So if I go back over here to my video and I go down to compositing, I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. There we go. It actually looks like that is part of her eye. Perfect. All right. So the left eye is done. Let's do the same thing with the right eye. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to grab a track layer. Pull that on top. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I can cinch this up. Zoom in a little more. Now we have our track layer. So simple right here. One, two, three. Let's add our track. So we grab the Bezier tool, make a track around her eye. And because I'm at the beginning of our clip, I'm just going to click forward. All right, the track is done. Let's rewind this to the beginning. Now we're going to go to step two, add our surface. Back to generator, insert our image, apply that to the clip. Now we need to reshape it, resize it, zoom in a little bit like that. And then I want to actually zoom in on her. Let's position it up a little bit. Definitely need to make it a little bit smaller. All right, let's get that outline showing. And then we want to cheat the perspective just a little bit. So we have to bring it in some. All right, that looks pretty good. Maybe I need to move it. Nice. Has an even line all the way around. Now her, I think again her head is turned a bit, so let's tilt this down. All right. Now 
Step three, add the mask. Let's zoom back in. Grab our Bezier tool. Create a mask around her eyes. We want to invert our mask. And then we want to pull our mask down so that it actually looks three dimensional. Now the blur on this is our automatically set up. It has a default of four. You can change that depending on what effect you're looking for. I like the four for this effect, it works. But if you need more or less, you can definitely change that there. So let's go ahead and zoom out. Let's hide that. Looks like it's still a little high over here, so let's fix that. And I'm going to go ahead and add another another point there just so we can get this to be more round. Still think it needs to come down just a little bit. All right, let's take a look at what that looks like. Zoom out really fast. That looks good. It actually looks like it has a shadow and it's underneath her eyelid. Perfect. So let's go ahead and change the uh, opacity or the blend mode to overlay. There we go. It looks like her eyelashes and everything are on top of her eye, which is the way it's supposed to look. That's great. Now, let's go ahead and render this and see what we have so far. All right, let's play this. Let's first, how about we zoom out just a little bit? And then let's play this through. Looks good. So far, so good. Now you could stop here if you were going for this effect, but we actually want it to glow, so we're gonna add a little bit more steps to this, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. I'm gonna rewind this to the beginning of our edit. And because we already have the tracking data, this part's a lot easier. We're gonna now just be playing with blend modes, opacity, and we're gonna add a few blurs here and there. So all we have to do for this is we're gonna be copying this la these layers. So this is the first layer I'm gonna copy. Remember, I'm just gonna hold down Option, Drag this up, and I'm going to rename this layer as well so I don't get confused. And this is going to be called Left Eye Blur. Okay, I'm going to scroll up here. Now I forgot to rename this layer, so let's go ahead and do that first. Let's name this Right Eye. And then I want to copy that one by holding down Option, drag it above, and copy. And let's go ahead and change that name to Right Eye Blur, okay? Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing the, the opacity in the blend modes, like I said. So let's start with the left eye. I want to go to video, and I want a little bit more white showing in her eyes because that's what happens when it glows. The way we're going to do that is we're going to change this to screen. And there you go. See, it pops. And let's go ahead and change the right eye blur to screen as well. And that pops out too. So far, so good. Now, it doesn't look natural, doesn't look realistic right now. So let's go ahead and add a blur to that and make it look a little bit more subtle. So to do that, I'm going to go over here to my effects panel and I'm going to go down here to blur. And I'm going to be using the Gaussian blur. Again, feel free to use whichever blurs you like. It's fine by me. Drag this over top of your blur layer drop it on. All right, it applied the blur. Now, as you can see, the blur is really too much. So we're going to take that down from 50% to probably around 11. All right, that looks good. And let's do the same thing with the right eye. Let's drag our Gaussian blur over, drop it on. and then change the blur amount from 50 to 11. All right, now our layers look like they have a little bit of a glow. Looks nice. 
All right, that looks very nice. Now, to make this actual effect kind of look a little bit cooler, a little bit more interesting, we're gonna add some keyframes. And we're gonna be keyframing the opacity. So what we're gonna do is, we're basically gonna go from 100% to 0%. So a nice fade in from uh, no color to full color. And I want it to start, let's see, let's start at about, let's have full color about right here. I'm just picking a random spot. This would be specific to your edit, depending on what you want your characters to do. But I'm gonna put a mark here on my, on my original footage. And then I'm gonna backtrack this and say, I want, maybe I want the, the effect to start about here. I'm gonna put another mark there. So now all we have to do is put our opacity keyframes in. So I'm gonna start here where I want it to be 100%. I'm gonna start on left eye first. I'm gonna go over to my opacity and I'm gonna click a keyframe. And then I'm gonna put this all the way back to the original start and this is going to be 0%, okay? Very easy, very simple. And we're gonna apply those keyframes to all these layers as well. So we're gonna start with 100%. And then we're going to go back to 0%. And then we're going to do the next layer. And we're going to start at 100%. And we're going to go back down to 0%. We have one more layer to do. So match that up to our mark. Click on that layer. We're going to keyframe 100% and scroll back down to 0%. Okay. Now we're going to render this all out and see what we have left. All right, now that our render is done, let's go ahead and see our final product. And it looks really good. It's convincing, as convincing as eye glowing can be. It looks great. I'm really happy with the way it tracked and the way it looks. And that's that. It's a very simple, easy way to add an eye glow using Rampant's Monster Toolkit and TrackX from CoreMelt. It could not be any simpler. I absolutely love this software and love the Monster Toolkit. It's amazing. So go check it out for yourself. Grab your free trial of TrackX today, and don't forget to grab your free monster textures as well and create your own monster goodness. As always, we love to hear from you, so leave a comment below, and don't forget to hit that thumbs up mark. You can also come check out more tutorials and free stuff at rampantdesigntools.com. Until next time, this is Final Cut Steph. Bye!